Hey traders, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel Equities. Today's video is the second video in the stocks series that I started maybe a, a week or 10 days ago. I got few comments suggesting having shorter videos. So today's video will be divided into several parts. The introduction, which we will finish today. Then we will look at each statement separately so we know exactly what is in there in, in these statements. After we are done with the financial statements, the next topic will be financial statements analysis, in which I'm going to introduce the financial ratios in detail. Please subscribe to my channel to be notified when those videos are uploaded. I have included here my contact details. If anyone would like to connect with me on uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook or uh, send me any questions on my email, I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. Okay, so without any past dues, let's move on. First, let me get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. In brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. So with this out of the way, let's get started. So in this set of videos, the, 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 whole, the whole videos about financial statements, we will be covering financial statements, the introduction, then income statements, other comprehensive income, balance sheet statement, cash flow statement, financial notes, statement of changes in owner's equity, and MD&A, or management's discussion and analysis. I will do my, my presentation on actual companies' statement. We look at uh, Apple, at uh, Microsoft. Uh, I didn't decide exactly who, but Apple is for, for sure. We'll do the income statement on, on Apple. The purpose is you know exactly what you are looking at. Because I believe that when it comes to financial statements, 90% of retail traders like me they they just know the, the 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 terms maybe they heard the terms they don't know they didn't actually bother to open a financial statement and look and look in it so we are going to do this in this in this series of you. okay so what about today what was the plans today Today we are going to see what do we mean by financial statements, why do we need financial statements, what do we mean by accounting standards, we have two accounting standards, GAAP and IFRS, and then is there minimum requirements in financial statements or any company could present whatever it feels like presenting. We will, we will see that, and as usual, I will end my video with the closing note. Okay, let's get started. What do we mean by financial statements? These are statements that companies prepare to report their performance to investors, analysts, and creditors. Public companies, they have to. They must submit their audited financial statements at least annually. 
has to be audited, revised. Financial statements provide information about the company's operation performed, its financial position, and guidance to their future outlooks and prospects. All companies need to raise money to grow and expand. So, to convince lenders that it's worthy, it must prove to those lenders and investors that its business is profitable and it will be able to return the borrowed money, their money, plus the interest. Same apply for analysts. Good companies do their best to file, to submit quality financial statement. This is, this is the, 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 the professional term. So analysts could easily analyze their statements and submit their opinion, either it's good or bad. If, if the financial statement is complicated or it's not as per the standards, analysts will not be able to submit a fair opinion about, about these statements. We have mainly three financial statements of course among others it's it's a long list but this is what uh, it's important to look at that are filed at least annually the income statements there should be an s income statements balance sheet and cash flow statement when you are considering investing in a company you must assess the company's past performance and evaluate its future prospects. You could ask, why would I even care to look at financial statements? That's why you need to know what this company is doing. Assessment must be performed before taking an investing decision in any company. This is the objective of this video, is to help you become more familiar with financial statements, able to analyze to some extent and assess those statements. Now, please pay attention, very important note. Notice that I said your mission is to assess the company's past performance. So always keep this in mind. These statements are in the past tense, maybe a couple of months old or maybe more. So remember that everything you're looking at, all the presented data and information in these statements, they must be already reflected in the, in the company's stock price. So having said that, your mission will be to try to forecast their future performance and hence you may conclude a bullish bearish or neutral stance about the company let's say that you're looking at a company that for the past year it was growing at an annual rate of 20 percent every year 20 percent there is no there is no reason that you would not expect it to grow 20 percent the coming year and the year after, if you're following the, the, the company and everything looks stable and the management guidance is positive, this makes sense. Another point which worth mentioning here is the fact that in addition to analyzing a company's financial statement, you also need to be able to compare this company's financial statement, the company's figures, with its peers or competitors. For you to be able to do that, you need to make sure that both companies are following the same standards or guide guidelines when filing or submitting their statements. We're going to look at what I mean by that, but let's take it step by step. The point is you will be able to compare 
apple to apple. Let me give you an example, but before the example, let me first talk about those accounting methods or standards that companies follow. What do we mean by accounting standards? Accounting standards are a set of guidelines and the rules that companies must follow when preparing their financial statements. First thing, it's a set of rules. Companies follow the standard principles and procedures that define the basis of financial accounting policies and practice. Because all entities must follow the same rules, accounting standards or the purpose is to ensure that the financial statements from multiple companies are comparable. Accounting standards make the financial statements credible and allow for more economic decisions based on accurate and consistent information. When you open two balance sheets, let's say Apple and Microsoft, you are going to know their assets, you are going to go their sales, their profit. It's consistent. We're going to see this at a later um, a slide, but just so you know from now. What accounting standards do we have? There are two accounting standards. Generally accepted accounting principle, GAAP for short, and this is in the US, and the IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, which is a global standard. The IFRS is used in more than 120 countries and GAAP is used in the US. We have something called IASB. IASB. This is an independent organization in the United Kingdom that develops and approves the International Financial Reporting Standards, the IFRS. So this organization is responsible for developing and approving the standard IFRS. Okay, what about GAP? They have a counter party called FASB. The Financial Accounting Standards Board. IASB, International Accounting Standards Board. Same thing in the US, it's an independent organization that develops and approves the generally accepted accounting principle gap for short. So when companies submit their financial statements, they must follow one of these standards, depending on their home country. Either they will follow GAAP or they will follow IFRS. Because there are two, as you might have guessed, there must be some differences between the two or else it would be just one. There are many, many differences between the two when it comes to accounting procedures. I'm not going to get into this now. This is not the scope of the course. The, 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 my, my plan is to help you make money trading, not becoming an accountant. But it, it's important to know, so I'm just going to give you an example with uh, how both standards account for inventory. Again, we have the same two standards the GAAP and the IFRS. For accounting for inventory, what, what I mean by that, it's any company would buy raw material or would buy products and they sell it throughout the year and by the end of the year they would say that they bought um, a raw material for $1 million and they sold it for $2 million, they made a profit $1 million. Perfect. 
So to put it into a professional accounting perspective, companies must follow standard in how they present their stocks, their inventory over time. There are four different ways to account for your inventor from an accounting perspective. There are the FIFO, LIFO, and another two methods. One of them is weighted average cost and specific identification. I'm, I'm just going to consider FIFO and LIFO. The, the, my purpose here is to point out to the fact that Generally speaking, depending on the accounting method used, when there are differences, some reporting figures could deviate a lot. And hence, the valuation will not be justifiable nor comparable. This is, this is why I'm bringing this here. I'm, I'm not trying to, to teach you accounting or uh, tell you the difference between IFRS and GAAP because I think it's like a hundred pages But the point is to convince you that if there are differences You cannot compare Two companies this this is what we're going to see but I'm taking it step by step as I said under IFRS LIFO is not permitted but under GAAP Companies may use LIFO or FIFO. What are those exactly? FIFO, it's first in, first out. Okay? LIFO, last in, first out. When we go over the examples, you understand this. It's very simple. There is, there is no rocket science in, 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 what, I'm, in what I'm explaining. FIFO assumes that the remaining inventory are the recently purchased or produced items, the last. The remaining in stock is the last. LIFO, on the other hand, the cost of the most, most recent product purchased or produced are the first to be expensed. Let's look at an example. It would be much easier if we go over an example. We have a company that produces coffee. It buys one ton of coffee beans every month. I put once every month, so you know there is, it pays one invoice per month and it has just a price. The cost of one ton of coffee bean is as per the table shown here. This is the table. This is months by months. It pays thousand, 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 thousand. Throughout the year, it bought 12 tons. Okay, 12 tons. In September, here, News came out that a strong hurricane may hit Brazil. So coffee prices jumped up 40%. Here plus 40%. So in September, the company had to, be, to pay 1,400 instead of 1,000 that it used to pay for the past eight months and all the way through December. How would it calculate its cost of sales? It will depend on which accounting standard it's using. Let's see. This is if the company was using FIFO, and this is if the company was using LIFO. Okay? If it was using FIFO, this is first. First in, first out. So this is first in, all the way to here. This would be the cost of the 10 tons. This is last. 
If the company was using LIFO instead of FIFO, it would start from it would start from down, and this would be the cost. We'll put everything into figures so you see exactly where this is going. Let's calculate the cost of goods sold. Here it's very simple, it's 8 times 1000. This is 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, plus 2400. Correct? So this is 10, 800. If it was using LIFO, it's 4 times this amount plus 6 times this amount. This is equal 11,600. Okay, this is pure math. Let's calculate the gross profit and the gross profit margin and the inventory balance and see how the, 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 the accounting standard used will affect this figure. Okay, let's assume that this company sells the ton for $2,000. Okay, it sold 10 tons. So the revenue is 10 times 2,000 is 20,000. So this is the figures if it was using FIFO and this is LIFO just to compare. First thing that you would notice, the revenues are the same in both methods. The cost of goods sold will differ. As we said, when we were using FIFO, the figure was 10,800. This is the cost. COGS cost of good, goods sold. Okay. Gross profit is revenue minus cost. Okay. And of course, same thing here. So the gross profit in FIFO, because the prices increased, pay attention, it's not always less or, 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 or more. It's because the prices increased, the last prices uh, is higher. So the cost of FIFO, the, 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 the profit margin is higher because the cost is less. If it was the opposite, if the prices were more expensive in the past, of course, the opposite will apply. We got a gross profit margin. It's 9,200 over 20. 9,200 over 20,000. This is profit margin, 46%. We'll do the same thing here. I don't want to waste time on this slide. It's, it's very straightforward. Just I want you to see the difference. This is the gross profit and this is the profit margin. So the method affects your profit margin. This is the takeaway that I want you to get from this, uh, from this couple of slides. That the accounting standards, the method used definitely affects the gross profit, the profit margin in the income statement. In the balance sheet, it will also have an effect on the assets. Inventory is a part of the assets. So it will have an effect on the assets. Which in turn, we're going to learn this when we discuss balance, balance sheet. I'm just going to give you a hint now. You know that assets equal liabilities plus equity. If assets increase, Let's assume that liability will stay the same. The value of the asset. So equity increase. Okay. We increase. Here we have $800 more of assets. 
this is 2000, this is 2800. So assets here are higher by 800. Okay, 800 dollars. So this means that the equity is higher. We are in the same company, just the way the method that was used will have an effect on a lot of the company's financial figure. Okay, great. So far, we have been looking at just one company. But assume you decided to invest in non-alcoholic beverage industry, and you are looking at Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Both of them are indeed in the beverage industry. Let's see. Coca-Cola is Euro-Pacific Partners PLC. The ticker is CCAP in New York Stock Exchange. It's based in the UK. The second word UK, we can right away say LIFO not permitted. Okay. Pepsi, PepsiCo Inc, ticker PEP in the NASDAQ, it's based in the US. So Pepsi may use LIFO or FIFO. Assume both companies' sales were $5 million, <clears throat> the US $5 million, and whatever it was in, in the UK, the equivalent is $5 million US dollars. Pepsi was using LIFO and Coca-Cola was using FIFO. Aluminum prices increased. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. We expect that the cost for FIFO, as we said in the previous slide when we're discussing the coffee example, when prices increase, the cost of goods in FIFO is less than in LIFO. So with the LIFO, the revenue is 5 million, the cost is 4 million, this is the gross profit, this is the gross profit model. Because Coca-Cola is using FIFO, its cost of goods sold is lower. So the gross profit is higher and the gross profit margin is higher. But if Pepsi used FIFO, like Coca-Cola, we don't know what its cost of goods sold would have been. Maybe it's going to be 3.5 million. But if both of them are using the same method, we can compare their cost. So because its old inventory cost was cheaper, its cost would be lower as well. So if both of them were using the same accounting method, both of them used FIFO, the same revenue, now we find that Pepsi's cost of goods sold is only 3.5 million and Coca-Cola is 3.8 million. Now we can compare the two numbers. Now we can compare their gross profit. Now we can compare their gross profit margin. But here it's not fair, it's not meaningful actually, because we're not comparing the same methods of accounting, the same methods of calculation. Can you see that? I hope so. I'm not expecting that you would perform this kind of reconciliation between different financial statements. Luckily, accountants do that for us, but it's extremely important that you know that based on the accounting methods, each company is using some, not all of course, not all of the figures in its financial statements, in its financial statements, will be different if it changed its methods of accounting, but some of them would be. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, 
now I'm confused. Coca-Cola is based in the UK and has subsidiaries in the US and all over the world. What would it do in this case? Without going into the details because this is a huge subject, parent companies consolidate, combine its figures from all its subsidiaries, adds up the sales, the expenses. To do so, it must, it, it must use the same accounting standards for all its subsidiaries. If the accounting standards are different, it must reconcile the statement. This is the accurate term to use. Okay? I believe that this introduction was very important and every trader must know it. I only sketched the surface, by the way. Um, I could have taken like three hours explaining just the introduction of financial statement. But these are the basics. If you know this, you are ready on the second video to be introduced to income statements. And I think we can, we can move on. When you open a financial statement, what do you expect to see? There are minimum requirements to be stated in financial statements. Whenever you open a balance sheet, whenever you open a balance sheet, you must, must, must find at least these lines. And of course, and other complicated stuff, I, I cannot put everything because, again, the point here is to help you become a better trader and make money from the stock market, not to become an accountant. If you want to be an accountant, you could study to, to, to be an accountant. This, these are just the basics. Balance sheet, assets equal liabilities plus equity. These are assets. And of course, some liabilities. And But this is to give you an idea what, what you're going to see. Inventories, of course, the, 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 the assets that the company has, the, the, the fixed assets. Uh, intangible assets, for example, Facebook. This amount is huge. We're going to see that. Income statement, imagine if you open an income statement and it doesn't have a revenue in it. You see? You understand what I mean? It doesn't tell you how much the cost it was, so you cannot calculate the profit. So, why is it there in the first place? These are the minimum required. And finally, we go to the closing notes as usual. I, I believe that this was a, a comprehensive introduction about financial statement. I will stop here. In the coming parts about financial statement, we will discuss each statement separately. And as I said, we are going to look at actual statements from big companies. We will start with the income statement. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good luck and have a great day.